Another government official steps down in Libya as the fighting continues. Find out who coming up on State of Events. The U.S. Census numbers are in. Find out which minority group has become the majority and what that means for the country. Coming up next on State of Events. Hello and welcome to State of Events. I'm Colin Ligren. And I'm Daya S4. Thanks for tuning in. Our top story today on the change in Gaddafi's regime. Since fighting erupted in Libya in February, it has been a back and forth struggle between Muammar Gaddafi's government and the rebel forces trying to oust him. State of Events reporter Ashley Larson is live in the newsroom with an update on what is happening on both sides of the fight. Ashley? After another long week of fighting, anti-Gaddafi rebels are struggling to keep hold of land they've gained. But the Gaddafi regime has also lost some key players. Foreign Minister Musa Kusa stepped down last week. Kusa was known as one of Muammar Gaddafi's closest confidants when it came to information about operational intelligence and foreign policies. Kusa's resignation is seen as a significant move, but is not crippling to Gaddafi's regime. Kusa left Libya and traveled to Britain soon after saying he was leaving his government position, following suit of Libya's justice and interior ministers who left when the conflict began. On the other side of the fighting, rebel forces are working to be more prepared to fight Gaddafi's supporters. I can do, I can do. Forces have taken it upon themselves to prepare their troops. They have set up a training camp at a military base in Benghazi and are teaching volunteers to fight. Even with heavy equipment, including machine guns, rocket launchers, and mortars, the rebel forces are having trouble keeping a hold of ground they gained with the help of Western military airstrikes. The New York Times reported that there are CIA members in Libya working with anti-Gaddafi forces. But President Obama is still saying the United States will take things slowly in terms of help. I think it's important for us not to uh, jump in with both feet, uh, but to uh, carefully consider what are the goals of the opposition, what kind of transition do they want to bring about inside of Libya. The Pentagon has also stepped back from leading in the air campaign, saying we don't want to be involved in yet another war. Now, not everyone agrees with the way President Obama is handling things in Libya. House Intelligence Chairman Mike Rogers says that Gaddafi is a sponsor of terrorism and could be a threat to the United States. On the other hand, a former presidential security officer says that it's up to the other Arab and African nations to step up as America steps back. Back to you guys in the studio. Ashley, how are folks reacting to President Obama possibly providing weapons to the rebels? Well, there are government officials on both sides of this argument as well. Some are saying that we need to arm the Libyan people so that they can fight for themselves, while others are saying we still really don't know who the leaders of the rebel group are and don't know if we really should be giving them weapons. We heard that the rebel forces have had a hard time hanging on to any advances they've made against Gaddafi's forces. Do we have any idea when or how the conflict will end? What many people are saying is this conflict is not going to end until Gaddafi steps down. And even though it's been a seesaw in terms of winning battles, the rebels do have a stronghold in the eastern part of the country. An international coalition has also been set up, and they're saying their number one goal is to make sure that Gaddafi's days are numbered. And now to news of Japan, where earthquakes are still happening on almost a daily basis. And the Japanese people are still on the edge this week. Several rescue teams continue to search for the life in the aftermath of the massive destruction. Although it may be too late for that, families want to find their members, and dead bodies count. A rescue team says manpower is not enough, so they have to use heavy equipment to clean up the debris. It's a painstaking job, but rescue teams are determined to keep going. The unrest is escalating in Yemen. Yemen protesters, military, and pro-government groups clashed on Tuesday night. 
Dozens were injured and at least 12 people were killed. A Pentagon spokesperson says the U.S. military will continue promoting dialogue among the various groups in Yemen despite the growing violence in the country. Even though the presidential election is still a year and a half away, President Obama has already announced his candidacy. Most Democrats consider Mr. Obama to be an unbeatable candidate in 2012 due to the fragmentation of the Republican Party and its lack of a strong leader. But some Republicans point out that Obama has made broken promises and had lackluster performance in the last two years. And there's a new plan to cut the budget deficit by about $5 trillion. This plan was introduced by the House Budget Committee Representative Paul Ryan. He believes that cutting spending is important because the government is spending too much. His plan includes a conversion of the traditional Medicare health plan into a system where the government would help pay for private health insurance plans. And the latest numbers from the U.S. Census reveal some interesting demographic changes that will show a dramatic increase in the Hispanic populations. James Martinez is with us to explain. Thanks, Colin. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, Hispanics are now the second largest ethnic group in the United States. According to the latest numbers by the U.S. Census Bureau, the Hispanic population is now 16% of the country, making them the second largest ethnic group in the United States. San Francisco State Raza Studies professor and chair Teresa Carrillo comments on the latest statistics. We should look at the new census numbers and we should realize what they're telling us about these big demographic changes in our country. And many of them could be positive changes. It depends on our responsiveness. President Obama held a televised town hall meeting that addressed the census and education among the Hispanic community. The Latino community in this country will be a key for our future success. And all the young people who are sitting here are going to be a key to our success. And that means that everybody has to be involved in this project of lifting up graduation rates, lifting up performance in things like math and science, making sure that young people are getting uh, education beyond high school so that they are prepared for the careers of the future. The Hispanic population has grown 43% since the last census in 2000. What that means is there will be a more diverse workforce with a demand for English and Spanish speaking abilities. Spanish is currently the second most spoken language in the world with 35 million Spanish speakers in the United States alone. 93.3 La Raza Promotions coordinator Mario Ortiz shares his insight. The Spanish is universal. I mean, Latin America is huge. And a lot of the times when you, you, you have uh, you know, other ethnicities learning Spanish, like I know a lot of Asians that speak Spanish very good. You know, there's a lot, there's, um, there's a lot of ca Caucasian people that speak Spanish. There's uh, African Americans that speak Spanish. I also want to make a confession, uh, and that is that although I took Spanish in high school, I'm receiving translation through this earpiece. Uh, but for all the young people here, uh, I want you guys to be studying hard uh, because it is critical for all American students to have uh, language skills. And I want everybody here to be working hard uh, to make sure that you don't just speak one language, you speak a bunch of languages. It is a shame that Latino parents in this country don't teach Spanish at home as an additional language to their educational development. You know, I think we should have um, a norm, like in Europe, of bilingualism for all educated kids. There are currently 14 million Hispanics in California alone. Spanish is currently spoken by 325 million people worldwide. Now, there's a lot to analyze with these latest census numbers. Voting, education, immigration reform could all be affected in the near future. Back to you in the studio. You can buy almost anything online, including breast milk. We'll show you why more and more mothers are buying breast milk for their babies, wherever it's available. That story and more coming up next on State of Events. Prices increasing, consumers may not want to shop at Whole Foods. Coming up on State of Events.
Donate to Habitat for Humanity Greater San Francisco and let your change become the change a family needs. Habitat for Humanity Greater San Francisco. Building homes and hope in Marin, San Francisco, and the peninsula. Thanks for tuning in to State of Events. As gas prices increase, so do other items we like to buy. But shopping for groceries might not save you money anymore. Reporter Marsha Westcott went to Los Angeles to see how the increasing food prices are affecting Californians and their wallets. Think that cooking dinner at home saves you money? Well, you might have to start thinking and shopping locally. Food prices are up over 4% in the last few months, and traveling may be the new way to shop for the best prices. It may not be a problem at major grocery stores anymore. Many are fleeing to local farmers markets. The price of green bell pepper doubled in price along with tomatoes and lettuce. As food prices increased almost 4%, which is the largest jump since 1974's winter freezes. Prices are expected to continue to increase through the rest of the year. I don't have time to shop anymore, but uh, I go grocery shopping usually by myself. Other increases were in meat due to the higher prices for animal feed. Some stores do offer discount cards, saving shoppers money. One resident doesn't mind splurging on meat every now and then. It gives me a lot of discounts, um, and when I want to get something really good like the meat, I like to go to Whole Foods because they got some organic stuff, and I like I don't mind paying the extra buck. While some cartoons poke fun at the large increase, it's the highest in the last 40 years. The prices are likely to be temporary, and vegetables should come down first. Dairy products are not left out of the price jump and reflects the higher prices in corn and soybeans. With prices increasing, consumers may want to stop shopping at places like Whole Foods. They might want to also check out their local farmer's market for reduced prices. Oh, heck yeah, yeah. But, um, but cooking for yourself in general saves a lot of money, I found out, after going, getting out of college. Food and oil prices have increased at similar rates over the last few years. Moody Analytics is saying the increase in gas is affecting buyers. Nothing is worse for our economy, for our job market than rising energy prices. Residents throughout California should look to shop locally in hopes to save money. Farmers markets are offering lower prices than that of large food chains. And every Saturday and Sunday at Park Merced in Stonestown Galleria, there are farmers markets to help you save on fresh produce. Other low prices can be found by shopping through the ad pages sent in your mail. For more discount tips on food, visit us at stateofevents.tv. Back to you. We all know that laughing and listening to music makes us happy, but did you know it can also lower your blood pressure? The American Heart Association says that listening to songs and funny jokes has almost the same effect as cutting out salt from your diet. In the study, researchers found that people who took part in the bi-monthly sessions involving music or laughing lowered their systolic blood pressure by an average of six points after three months. Although this is encouraging, music and laughter alone aren't quite enough to fully treat high blood pressure. A Kaiser Permanente researcher says weight gain increases the risk of getting breast cancer. The study shows it is more likely than women that women who gain a lot of weight will have breast cancer again, and some of them are more likely to die from it than women who keep their weight stable. However, it's not clear if there is a connection between weight gain and women's risk of death and cancer recurrence. Casually sharing and selling breast milk online is becoming more and more common. Amanda Batat joins us with a story on one of the Internet's hottest commodities. Amanda? You can find breast milk for sale the same way you might shop online for a new pair of shoes. Here's a look at what some mothers and health experts have to say. When it comes to your baby's health, most experts agree that breast milk is the way to go. Some mothers who can't breastfeed are buying milk online instead. Websites like Eats on Feets and OnlyTheBreast.com let people buy and sell breast milk, but some mothers are skeptical. I don't know if it's dangerous per se. I don't know if I would personally do it myself just because I would, I think I would actually have to know the person. And experts warn about the health risks that come from getting milk online. A mom may have an infection that you don't want the baby to get, not knowing who the donor is. There's 
there's also medications out there that the moms can be taking and if they donate milk the baby can get that too. An alternative to buying milk on the internet are milk banks, like the Mother's Milk Bank in San Jose. Milk like this right here is tested for bacteria, cultured and pasteurized to meet California licensing standards, all before it goes out to recipients. The milk bank services over 50 hospitals and the entire West Coast region, barely keeping up with the demand. Demand is, is skyrocketing, and part of that demand increase is because the FDA has now endorsed donor milk. Just last year, the milk bank shipped out over 420,000 ounces of breast milk, and the demand is expected to keep going up. For more information on how to receive or donate breast milk, visit our website at stateofevents.tv. So what are some of the concerns about online donors? Well, obviously the main concern is passing diseases through breast milk, but even if the milk is disease-free, depending on the donor's diet, it may not provide all the proper nutrients for your particular baby. And on top of that, this milk is sometimes coming from across the country, so there's no way of knowing whether the donor prepackaged it correctly or if they even kept it fresh. And what are some of the reasons mothers are buying breast milk online? Well, the main reason is probably because of the price difference. Um, if you're going to buy it at a milk bank, it's going to run from 4 to $5 at the most, and that's per ounce. So if your baby drinks, say, 25 ounces a day, which some babies do, it can be over $100 a day. And if you're going to buy it online, it can be as little as $1 to $2 per ounce. Some others are just donating it for free. Thank you, Amanda. Last September's pipeline explosion in San Bruno could have been avoided. The head of the U.S. Pipeline Safety Agency is questioning why PG&E was stepping up the pressure on its natural gas lines. PG&E raised the pressure on the San Bruno pipeline twice, once in 2003 and again in 2008. Experts say such spikes probably stressed the pipe seam to the breaking point. The Chronicle reports that PG&E started raising the pressure on gas lines to above legal limits because the federal code required it to be able to deliver gas on cold winter days. There's new concern today about the safety of Muni after a dangerous incident on April 1st. Take a look at this video taken by a passenger on the L train. It shows the door opening as the train passes through an underground tunnel. There's even a point when passengers attempt to close the door to try to make their ride safer. Muni trains travel underground at 35 miles an hour, which is a speed that is very unsafe. State of Events talked with Muni this morning, and they said, quote, Well, this issue is rare. It should never happen. It appears the incident was caused by human error, and appropriate disciplinary action will be taken. There's no word yet from Muni on what disciplinary action will be taken. You can find out, find more in-depth stories and exclusive at stateofevents.tv. Check, check us out online to find all of our State of Events stories that you can watch anytime. San Francisco, the new hotspot for returning veterans, coming up on State of Events. There are many important days in your child's life. Their first birthday. Their first big game. their first day of school. Choosing the right school for your child sets them on a path for success. Apply on time. It's for your family's future. Welcome back to State of Events. San Francisco is doing its part to help returning veterans ease back into college life. Brittany Bell has the story. San Francisco may be considered a liberal city, but that does not mean they do not care about the troops. San Francisco State University just implemented a new veterans office to help men and women transition from war to campus. Most of us have seen a war movie and the results can be heartbreaking. But have we ever wondered what happens when veterans return? Most people would not associate San Francisco as a veterans oasis, though most don't know about the Presidio. The Presidio is a government memorial that honors those who have served. Park Presidio in San Francisco is not the only place dedicated to honoring the returning and fighting veterans. 
San Francisco State University is also doing their part to help those returning from war. San Francisco State has recently opened their Veterans Center. This center provides many services, from health services to career counseling. It's a dedicated space where veterans can come to find out about um, uh, getting their veterans benefits, their certification. The center is a unique service offered in California's CSU system. Doing a major initiative to uh, encourage veterans to come to the campuses and to provide them with the kind of support. Many people assume San Francisco would not have a large group of veterans due to the school's liberal reputation. Returning veteran Anthony Ruda believes San Francisco is popular due to the atmosphere. I think for most people, they just, they like the culture. San Francisco may be known to be anti-war, but it is also known to greet people with open arms. The California State University system is trying harder to help the returning vets. According to the Veterans Office, San Francisco State University has one of the most established veteran systems in place. Four CSUs have also been named Best for Vets in 2010. Back to you. Teachers have been bringing in guest speakers to classrooms. Reporter Amal Hassan is here to tell us about the new feature that lets teachers bring in guest speakers without leaving the classroom. That's right. Skype has a new feature for teachers to find partner teachers or guest speakers for a specific learning activity worldwide. It's called Spike in the Skype in the Classroom. It allows teachers to create their own project or find, find one where their help is needed. Here's, here's how you can do that. You would simply first have to log in, and then click on Projects, you will get a list with the most recent projects first. If you want to narrow your search, you can type in specific keywords. Music, for example, and that will give you a list of all the music projects. You can also filter your results. When you find a project you are looking for, you can comment or leave a question. You can also email the project owner. You can also share the project with other people on Facebook or Twitter. If you are an educator and want to find, find out to show how your students use Skype in the classroom, go to stateofevents.tv and click on the web exclusive. Back to you. A United Airlines plane was forced to make an emergency landing on Monday. The plane had just taken off on its route from New Orleans to, New to San Francisco when the cockpit filled with smoke. Although several of the instruments and controls failed, the pilots landed the plane safely. All 106 passengers and crew returned to the ground safely. Wreckage from Air France flight, flight 447 was found on Sunday. The flight was headed to Rio de Janeiro to Paris on June 1st of 2009 when it crashed into the Atlantic Ocean. All 228 people on board were killed and the wreckage was found nearly 2.5 miles <coughs> underwater. Now on to our continuing coverage of the Barry Bonds trial. It is now in its third week and prosecutors are still focusing on a urine sample that tested positive for steroids back in 2003. Legal experts say the federal prosecutors have so far presented a strong case. Bond's ex-girlfriend and two former baseball players testified against him. A recorded conversation of Bond's orthopedic surgeon Dr. Arthur Ting and his former business partner Steve Hoskins has been barred from the jury. A San Jose man is in critical condition today after suffering a severe beating last week following the Giants season opener in Los Angeles. Brian Stowe, seen here, was jumped from behind by two men wearing Dodgers jerseys after Thursday's game. They beat and kicked Stowe in the head and body several times. Stowe was placed in a medically induced coma after the incident 
and has still not regained consciousness. His attackers are described as two Hispanic males in their 20s. A $50,000 reward is being offered for information leading to the arrest of these two men. If you have any information, contact the Los Angeles Police Department. Now let's check out the weather forecast. Allie, Allie Williams is here with some good news if you're planning to go outside this weekend. Thanks, Dahlia. I hope you have some time to get out and enjoy the sun this weekend. Today is a little cloudy. We'll have the coolest weather of the next few days today with highs of 52 and lows at 47. We'll have showers throughout the day, but things will clear up tomorrow. On Saturday, we'll see some dispersed clouds, but it will be mostly sunny by the end of Sunday. The high of the weekend is 60 degrees, and the lows will vary from 48 to 50. Overall, great weather if you're looking to take a day trip downtown or just be outside for a bit. Monday's temperatures will stay the same, but the clouds will probably be rolling in. They'll be mostly gone by Tuesday, though. Here we have highs of 58 degrees and lows of 49. Basically, we're looking at cool weather all weekend. Very little chance of rain after today. I'm Allie Williams with State of Events. Have a great weekend. Back to you. And Angela Masalem joined us in studio with Weekend Update. You'll be jumping from a big fat Italian wedding to a live human auction. Then you're off to relive the early 19th century Greek style. So brace yourself this weekend. You're in for a wild ride. That's right, Colin. This weekend is packing some big surprises. If you've ever wanted to experience a traditional Italian wedding, this is your chance to go to Tony and Tina's wedding dinner show Friday night at Imperial Palace in the city. Be part of the funniest wedding ceremony and reception you'll ever attend. And be, be prepared for a night of unpredictability because you won't be able to tell who's a guest and who's an actor. If you can't make it this weekend, there's always next Friday and Saturday. The wedding starts at 7, so be sure to get your tickets and get yourself invited. They say Italians have a hot temper. Well, sound the alarms and get ready for some real fiery attitudes at the 9th Annual Bay Area Firefighter Auction this Saturday night at the Sir Francis Drake Hotel. Firefighter bachelors will auction themselves to help raise money for the Elisa Ann Rooch Burn Foundation. Ladies, turn up the heat on the competition because the winner takes all, including a day at the spa to get pampered and a date with her firemen in the beautiful Napa Valley. The Hellenic Cultural Parade on Sunday won't be celebrating those who fight fires, but rather those who fought for the freedom of Greece. The event kicks off at 3 with a parade down 5th and Market to City Hall, where paraders will be dressed in freedom fighter clothing from the early 19th century. Then at 5, come join everyone else back at City Hall for traditional dance performances and authentic Greek food. The event is free, so bring your loved ones and have a good time. For more information on where you can buy your tickets for Tony and Tina's wedding and the firefighter auction, go to stateofevents.tv. And on that note, make sure to check us out on the web at stateofevents.tv. You can also like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at State of Events. That's it for this episode of State of Events. See you next week. I'm Colin Ligren. And I'm Dahlia S4. Thanks for watching and have a great week.